I'd like to introduce you now to Susie Akers, who is our chair of the SPRC, and she is going to introduce you to our new pastor and his wife. Okay, now I have the pleasure of introducing our new preacher. We're so excited. Leslie and Amy Broadbent, come on up. We are thrilled, thrilled that you guys are here. <laughs> Okay, Leslie, Amy, welcome to Texas, and welcome to Polk Street United Methodist Church. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Well, thank you so much for the incredible Texas welcome that you have given us Okies. Uh, we are so, so very excited to be here. Wow, uh, an orchestra. I, I take it that this is an every Sunday event. I'm excited. <laughs> this is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, we are here uh, to worship the living God. We are here uh, to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Whatever we do, no matter what kind of Sunday it is about, it is all about Jesus Christ. And so we are here in his name asking that the Lord would bless our time together. So would you bow with me in prayer? Oh, loving God, we thank you for the incredible love and grace that we have found in Jesus Christ. What an incredible blessing it is to live in such a country that we have, um, we have the ability to worship you. And so, Lord, as we have come together as a body of Christ, to come and worship you. We know that where two or more are gathered in your name, you are in our midst. And so, Lord, come and be in our midst this morning. Come and be glorified. May all that we do, all that we say, and all that we are bring honor and glory to you, Almighty Father. We pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
out in Roger Mills County, Oklahoma, uh, we would say, wow. <laughs> Thank you so, so very much for the beautiful, beautiful music on this, on this incredible day. Um, people have asked me today, are, are you nervous? Um, part of what makes me nervous today is I am perched up on a small little step, but I'll, I'll be honest, over the last uh, week or so, we've been painting in our new house, and so I've been perched on top of a scaffolding uh, in our living room, and so this is the least nerve-wracking thing that I've done all week long uh, for someone who is a bit afraid of heights. Our scripture this morning that I want to share with you and and um, I want us to think about just a few moments this morning, comes out of the Gospel of John, John chapter 15, and out of respect for the reading of God's Word. If you would please stand with me. John chapter 15, verses 12 through 13. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you, would you bow with me? Almighty God, pour out your spirit upon this, your word, and make it be for us the word of life that we might be people of life. And now God, hide me behind your cross that your message of love and grace might shine through for the redemption of the world through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, as we were preparing uh, for this Sunday, I, I asked George, so how long do I have? And I, George, I think you said 35 minutes. Is that right? <laughs> I, no, he, he said five, and so um, we'll, we'll see how, how, I'm able to hold, how I'm able to hold that. So I would invite you to, to think along with me just for a few moments about, about this passage of Scripture that I believe is the very heart of who we as Christians are. There's a lot of questions today on what love is. Some believe that love is just an emotion, it's a feeling, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's romance really is what it is. And so people can fall in and fall out of love. It's friendship, no more than, than friendship. And, and again, you can, you can jump from one love to another, another kind of love. But in the Bible, love is something far, far different. You see, Jesus commands us to love one another. You see, love cannot be an emotion. It absolutely cannot be an emotion because I can't be commanded to have an emotion. Quick, be angry. <laughs> we, we can't do that but we can be commanded for an action. You see, love, the kind of love that God calls forth from us, is an action. No doubt, no doubt, we all have to have something that we are living for. If the last 14 months has taught us anything, we have to have something to live for. We have to have something more than watching The Tiger King on Netflix. <laughs> We, we have to have something more than, uh, than being secluded at home for the last 14 months, don't we? We have to have something that, that we live for. But our faith also teaches us that we must have something to die for, worth dying for. And I'll be, I'll be honest, sisters and brothers, that there is... I mean, there are a number of things that I would lay down my life, life for. And today, we are, we are honoring this great country of ours. And here in a few moments, we will also be honoring those who have who've been in service to their country previously or, or right now serving their country. And they have said they are willing to lay down their lives for you and for me. And that should be applauded. And many of us would also say, oh, no doubt, our families. Our families, we would, we, 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 would, we would jump in front of a bullet for our families, wouldn't we? Absolutely would as parents and as grandparents and as spouses. We would absolutely die for our families. We must also die for our faith. Be willing to die for our faith. Now, it, the, the phrase here, the phrase here that, that Jesus mentions is, is something different. Greater love has no one than this, 
than someone to lay down his life for his friends. Now, mo most of the time we understand that to be dying for our friends. And, and, and when, you, when you put this into context of the, the context of Jesus' life, we know exactly what he's, what he's saying, aren't, don't we? I mean, we recognize that Jesus came and lived among us and died for us. Those who were once considered enemies now are, are, considered, are considered God's family. We are considered his sons and daughters because of the death of Jesus Christ. But I think laying down our lives oftentimes is even more difficult than dying for our faith. For you see, in, in dying for our faith, and there, literally there have been hundreds of thousands, if not millions, who have died for their faith, martyrs that have gone before us. And I hope and pray that, that, that I would be willing to die for my faith. But I know this, I have been willing to lay down my life for my faith. This is how much I believe in this gospel of Jesus Christ. This is how much I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I am willing to lay down my life for it. Anoki, born and raised in Roger Mills County, Oklahoma, this country boy was willing to come to the big city of Amarillo, Texas. <laughs> and if you don't think that's laying down my life, <laughs> I've staked my life on it. I've staked my family's livelihood on it. This is what I believe. It's the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, we were once foreigners. We were once God's enemies. But now, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are offered to be His sons and daughters. And in return, now in return, it's not just receive, receive, receive. You see, Jesus Christ is calling us to daily lay down our lives for Him. If anyone would come want to be one of my followers, you must deny yourself daily. Take up your cross and follow me, Jesus says. It's who I am. I've staked my life on it. I've laid down my life for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I would invite you to do the exact same thing. Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, you came to hear this incredible orchestra. Maybe you came to hear Dr. Biffle. Maybe you came to hear this incredible choir, to see this incredible, <laughs> incredible sanctuary. And you just happen to be here on this Sunday. Maybe you have never truly laid down your life for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would invite you to do that today, even on this Sunday, no doubt, a Sunday in which we are proclaiming our love for our country and we are honoring those who have been willing to lay down their lives for the country. We must all be willing daily to lay down our lives for our Lord Jesus. Would you bow with me? Lord, we come to you recognizing that there's so much to live for in this world. Over the last 14 months, we have found that we must live for something more than just for consumption, more than just for entertainment. But Lord, we also must be willing to die for something. No doubt there are so many things that we are willing to die for, our families, for many of us, even our country. But Lord, there are things that we must be willing to lay down our lives for, to take a back seat, to make Lord of our lives. And that one thing that we must all be willing to make Lord of our lives is you, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, if there, are, if there are people here within the sound of my voice, either here in person, those who are joining with us online, our television audience,
who have never laid down their lives for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh God, come and so move in our hearts and lives that we might, we might come to you and make you our Lord. For in losing our lives, we will find it. Come and be the Lord of our lives. Help us to lay it down for the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.